Good morning and Jai Hind. Uh, what an honor for me to be here with one of the most eminent personalities of space in India. And I start with introducing him, uh, though he needs no introduction, but uh, today in the early morning, the first thing I did was open the internet and saw how should a fire chat, fireside chat be done. Any fire and, and that said, that the first thing is, I talk a little about uh, the main person whom I, I would be addressing. Now, Mr. Kiran Kumar was born in Hassan in Karnataka in 1952. He joined ISRO and that is SAC uh, at Ahmedabad in 1975 and became the director of SAC in 2012, chairman of ISRO in, by 2015 to 2018, and he has still not retired despite being in service for more than 44 years. He is a member of the Space Commission and directs what is happening in the policy domain in space so, uh, already. Uh, uh, he is in a continuously is busy with it and what he has taken on after he has left his chairmanship is capacity development at the grassroots level. Dr. Kiran Kumar extensively travels. Uh, 15 days in a month he is out talking at schools, colleges, seminars and in the last four years what I have seen is wherever I meet him there is a group of young men talking to him, he's patiently listening to their ideas, advising them, guiding them. And it's the same thing uh, wherever he goes to IITs, to engineering colleges and whatever. In fact, uh, talking to some old ISRO scientists, they say, Dr. Kiran Kumar is the space Mahatma. His humility with his knowledge is reflective in way, his, in his demeanor, and in the way he still takes it on as a responsibility for space to grow. And what is most interesting is that the, during the time he was the chairman was the idea of privatization of space which started building up and which culminated in the government in 2020 announcing that space now was open to the private sector. And what has been a landmark in that has been in 2000 and when the space policy has come, today private players are allowed to do everything in space from communications to PNT to even asteroid mining if they want to or make a colony in moon. Now with that, I would sir take you back to first 2017 and that is when the PM had a meeting with all ministries. Could you tell us a little about it? See, the Prime Minister is one of the person who is very much familiar with use of space technology for governance. And even while he was in Ahmedabad, he had made extensive use of communication and remote sensing in many activities. And then while ISRO had been trying to bring in the use of space technology for the benefit of the country, it had many difficulties because one of the key things we realize is when you go and tell somebody what you are doing, can be done differently, the first thing that the answer you get is, I know my job better, who are you to tell me? So it takes a lot of time and effort to showcase to them that what they are doing can be done much more efficiently, much more in a more productive manner if you make use of the space technology. So one of the things that we did at that time, it was practically 2015 itself. So what happened is that all the departments of the central government we work with each other department and then try to identify what is it that the space technology can do to that department. And the, in a two days program, the event happened. And in that event, Prime Minister himself spoke extempore for 45 minutes telling all the secretaries how space technology can be used. And then we had set up 58 groups working with that. And as a result of that, a lot of uh, progress happened. Because like I said, in ISRO had been trying, there were early adopters 
then a lot of laggards, and then there were some departments which quickly adopted, like meteorology department or forestry department, etc. But then many of others had not done. So this is how, if the people at the top realize that you can make use of the technology for solving the problems, you get the push. So that's how ISRO was also able to push the ability to bring in space technology solutions to a whole lot of them. Probably you are very familiar that initially what was done was communication, broadcasting, weather forecasting, and cyclone. These were the major areas, but there were a lot more which happened subsequently. Uh, just to add one thing, if you would be aware, 20 years back if there was a cyclone on the eastern coast of India, the losses of life were in thousands. Now a cyclone comes, it is monitored all over the Indian Ocean, and even it passes through with maybe a few animals dying somewhere. That is what has happened and in this space technology, along with other what meteorology has done, has been able to ensure this, even space communication and other things. Uh, but a credible contribution has been there from ISRO. Now, very recently, the chairman of ISRO laid down the vision for a sp space future till 2045. And so, uh, I request you to just give us the outlines of that. And most importantly, what we would like to know is, what would be the role of startups in that? Yeah, if you look at uh, the way the space technology was actually brought in and how it moved, we are all very familiar when the first object went into space, it was way back in 57. That was just 10 years into independence for India, a country struggling to provide food, shelter, education to its citizens. So at that time, the use of space technology for solving problems of the country looked like a very remote activity. But then, because there were people like Dr. Sarabhai who could convince the government that it is the technology that is going to help the country, that's how it started. And like what we pointed out, whether it is weather monitoring or earth resources monitoring, all of that happened from space. But by the time today, when we are 75 plus years into independence, not only ISRO has moved, but also the world has moved. Earlier, this space was only the domain of uh, nation states, both because of the security and both because of the costs and risks involved. But today, like human being is trying to conquer space as the fourth frontier. So the number of actually players who are outside the nation states has increased tremendously. And India also as a country, when it is trying to go from fifth largest economy to the topmost, one of the key areas is space, where space brings in not only a lot of um, revenue generating mechanisms, but more than anything, it is a place where the human ability to perform is going to determine how nation states compete with each other in the coming days because space is the fourth frontier, is already being used for, apart from all the good things it can do, it's also being used for dominating over others and controlling others. And if you do not do sufficient activity there, you will be left be far behind again. So India definitely cannot afford that. So what the government is trying to do is, both in terms of space economy, which is a trillion dollar economy, unless more and more Indians participate in that and be part of this, both in terms of generation of revenue, jobs, and more than anything else, the capability and the competence of the country to survive in a domin competing world being an equal among them. So apart from what uh, the India was doing in space technology, currently the effort will be to make use of all the abilities of being in space to look at whether communication, broadcasting, earth monitoring, and also in terms of power and then ability to take care of uh, cyber security, a whole lot of things. So the government is quickly trying to enable the industry to participate in that. And in that, now the question you are asking is, the space startups, what is their role and what can be done? It's here, I'm reminded of what Dr. Sarabhai used to tell. In fact, this is a very interesting episode. Dr. Sarabhai was asked to take over Ahmedabad Textile Industrial Research Association and run that. At that time, one of the tasks, he had put an advertisement in the paper which said, 
those with experience need not apply now you see it is looks very counterintuitive but then today you will understand if you are trying to actually keep something like a status quo or only do marginal changes to whatever you are doing you need people with experience and those with experience are able to do with little resources and little effort many things but then problems if they have to be tackled you need to look at the problem afresh and with a totally new mind and then solve those problems i'll give you an example now in space technology itself by virtue of so many years of experience people were thinking that operating satellites at lower altitude 200 kilometers etc is a whole lot problematic and it is something which not to be attempted even that kind of thing because the risks that were involved but then it is only those people who want to push the boundaries and then look at how things can be done which can disrupt the existing mechanism if we already saw one of the startups announcing a project 200 where it talks about operating satellite constellations at 200 kilometers you can see the advantages it brings by operating the satellite at a lower altitude you can get higher resolution in imaging you need less power on the satellite for systems which are active like radars etc and then it can give you a whole lot of advantages but the real difficulty is how to keep that satellite in operation in that orbit but then once somebody has challenged globally the idea is picking up there are more and more people who are looking at how can we solve this problem of apparently unmanageable thing with newer solutions and you will quickly see that a whole lot of people are actually looking at different ways of managing their satellite orbits with a continuous propulsion system unlike in the previous case it was operating in bursts and this thing so coming back to your basic point now startup has a primary advantage that he is trying to look at solving a problem with a perspective which is very different from what others are taking and he is also trying to challenge the existing system and here is the opportunity and also the pitfall that is what the startup should be actually looking at because they are latching on to an idea which could be path breaking which can make a difference but then translating that idea into reality is where the struggle is uh, that's very uh, a good guideline you have given for the startups and just to inform you gentlemen uh, this company which is now talking of uh, this project of having a satellite at 200 kilometers very counter intuitive like he says because of the challenges it holds uh, in maintaining it there uh, because of gravitational pull and other things and all this idea is starting from india that is what we are proud of and this is a startup which just came up in 2018 they started with green propulsion they are working on it and now they are looking at this project and there are many other startups which are looking into domains where like uh, dr kiran kumar says isro may be because of the hierarchical system because they had to meet challenges of finances uh, be a part of a system uh, somebody thinking of uh, thinking out of the box was there but not so much is now very easily available to startups but startups have do have many challenges they have challenges of finances they have challenges of regulation in this very complex domain of space what is the evolving relationship now sir between isro and the startups which is now developing which is making things easier for them and yeah. how can it be improved yeah if you look at uh, department of space or isro itself the primary objective of this institution was how to make use of space technology for the nation's benefit addressing specific problems of the nation so in that sense if you see the privatization or even making more and more private entities operating in space is also in the interest of the country and in the interest of growth of the country so the department of space is also looking at how it can enable this community by providing 
whatever knowledge that they have acquired and also many of the facilities test facilities that are there how to make it available for using because one of the key things is whatever you build build test as you fly or fly as you test if you want to do you need to have huge test facilities and instead of spending time and effort on starting building those things isro is also trying to offer these as a capability for those who are being coming up with systems for testing so one of the thing is both in terms of we also started what is called as a capacity building program office where the idea was not only to build capacity within the organization but outside the organization for supporting space activity so a whole lot of things are moving in this direction the con- both the environment and the conditions are being modified because again when initially the role of department was to make use of the technology accessible to you and solve the problems at that time you are more focused on only looking at how can you take advantage of that scenario but now apart from your own ability to work within constrained resources you are now looking at how can you enable a whole lot of people and then share both ideas as well as test methodologies one of the key things probably that can be taken advantage of is the system can subject itself to the reviewing process which is very prevalent in isro and using more and more isro systems for going through such rigorous reviews just two points are very important here see when any project is undertaken there is a team which is formed to run the project normally what happens is that project team has the wherewithal given the resources and a timeline for completing the task but the way it has happened in isro is this team initially is subjected to intense reviewing process to make them realize that whatever pro- mechanism they have adopted for succeeding in that project may have limitations but still they are given the freedom to set the targets and move ahead and make sure that as long they can as they can demonstrate that though their solution may not be the best most optimal but as long as it can deliver what is required for that program it is allowed to move on this is very important because many times the reviewing process can pose such tricky questions which could take eternally long to happen so this kind of a balance is done and then the teams should understand that no matter who is working their knowledge has limitation but that limitation should not deter them as long as they can realize that it is good enough for the specific task they have in hand so it not it not be the best most optimal etc but it should be adequate for that specific task on hand so this process can be actually showcased more and more of such things can happen across the globe uh, it's very interesting uh, and in fact one of the things i did not tell you about dr kiran kumar is that in isro he is known as a expert investigator for review committees and his biggest success is the review of chandrayaan 2 which was done in deep analysis and also for whatever was happening in chandrayaan 3 and if all of you would have observed the kind of confidence the isro chairman had much before chandrayaan 3 had landed was because of the kind of internal revenues which uh, reviews which had been done inside isro and they were so confident much before it landed that it will be a successful landing and uh, this is a process which has even gone to the private sector uh, one of our startups uh, agni cool had to scrub their attempt four times before they finally got successful and here was isro holding their hand firstly in making the space port and many of you would have maybe seen it on the tv the isro chairman and even dr kiran kumar they were were there at many times when the launch was being planned and of course for the final launch uh, this kind of hand holding and support is very very important for our startups in the future now as time uh, is becoming lesser and lesser in fact uh, the organizers told me that sir you have only 20 minutes and uh, dr kiran kumar asked them is it on earth or on the moon <laughs> because if it is on moon i can easily multiply it by some figure uh, so i'll be somewhere in between and not go beyond 200 kilometers 
may be exceeded by a few minutes. Uh, sir, the most important question is that we have a strength in our private sector in India, which has been nurtured by what ISRO has been doing for so many years. What are the key areas in which India can lead in space technology in the world? No, I think um, the real issue for India should be, see, even today, in many ways, what is happening in the country is in some way a different level of colonization that is happening. So India should actually think of ways and means by which it can break such colonization and trade a new path. And it is actually India which can demonstrate that purely because the value system of this land is very different from the world. Today, majority of the world is looking at how space can be used for dominating and gaining ascendancy over others. Whereas traditionally, even when the UN started, space is supposed to be the common heritage of humanity and it should be used for all uh, peaceful purposes, etc., etc. But then we know that the human tendency is any new technology, any new capability, how to take advantage of this to dominate over others. And it is here that I think the India has a big chance because we are all very familiar how India dealt with COVID and how India dealt with even software, digital uh, stack system, how it actually broke the thought process of the rest of the world in making sure not only the planet Earth can have sustainable living and future. In future also, if that has to happen, India needs to find a way of being present in space in a manner where others cannot ignore you and also make use of your ability to actually talk about how sustainable living on planet Earth becomes important. And for this is a huge opportunity, huge opportunity in all domains, whether you talk of using space for resource monitoring, observation, or even making sure all deterrents are there, security, security, cyber security, you name, every one of them, and including See, we are also looking at moon, landing on moon by 2040. If you are to land on moon, it's not that the activity is going to end there. It's only a beginning of a whole lot of things. So space provides you an opportunity to be at some very specific strategic locations, which can be used for the benefit of life on Earth. And bringing in this aspect of sustainability of activities, living on Earth, and how to make sure that all the resources are actually used for the good aspects of life and not only meant for dominating over others. If that has to happen, competence has to be built. And it is here that the private entities also have an opportunity because they can look beyond today and immediately it may be very difficult to make sure that you have success and then you can bring in. But if you are working on relatively long-term objectives, startups can see much better opportunities, is what I would think. So I'll end with one question, and that is looking at the future, and not very far ahead. If we would be sitting here again for a fireside chat 10 years later, what, would we, what do you think would be the status of space, and especially the startup? Yeah, I think the startups in space at that time, like I was just mentioning, like the difference we have made in the world in these two events, India also with the ability of the startups would have shown to the world that the way to operate in space has a different value system in India and this would have been demonstrated by startups already. Thank you, sir. Uh, before I end, just if there are any questions, two of them we are ready to take it. Here. Yeah. Um, so, shall I ask? Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir, first of all, it's an honor to be able to talk to you. Um, my question is primarily from uh, the projects that are happening in ISRO. In 2028, there is a project called Bharatiya Antariksha Station, right? So, I wanted to know how can students prepare to be eligible for projects like that? Okay, see, if you are looking at that one of the things probably we also need to look at is 
visualizing what can be done even beyond what isro is thinking see because now today the government once it has made a commitment by 2035 you have a space station 2040 you have a landing on the moon and coming back once these things are there even today the amount of work that is required to be done within the country for making it happen is very huge and then instead of depending all the time on what isro is thinking and what isro is doing you could actually look at what can be done independent of that and there is going to be enough support in the in system for making it happen and one of the limitations again maybe it's our upbringing all the time we are looking for some guidance some something to be told before we move ahead i think this is another mindset which the startups and also the young younger generation has to really look at why can't you come up with an idea and then that idea can be picked up and move ahead so instead of trying to look at what isro isro is definitely going to support lot of people provide opportunities during these missions for example if we are landing on moon by 2040 there will be many missions to moon in all of them there will be opportunities to carry experiments and payloads and other activities which are actually developed by private enterprise also for that there will be competition that will come up and based on the selection it will happen but for that if you are thinking what is it that i am thinking today maybe you are missing the bus so you should think of for such a thing what can i do and then when the competitions are announced showcase your idea and then move ahead that's how i would think both the academy and the startup ecosystem of course the startups have the real challenge of surviving and moving ahead but then those who will succeed and who will make a breakthrough are those who are thinking beyond today's thought processes so one quick question yeah. my pleasure to be here sir to ask you a question uh, in context uh, sustainability and uh, uh, reusability how india is developing like reusable rockets and uh, reusable vehicle uh, for uh, next big leap thank you yeah it's here again what happens is within isro when you are looking at the real challenge initially was to make things happen at that time the whole idea was how can we take systems into the space and put them into position so our first stages were all basically solid motors and solid motors are not very good things for even if you are bringing back you don't gain much if you are able to do with liquid engine based uh, stages so what india is currently doing is looking at how our next generation vehicles are in such a way that when you bring back the initial stages it can be refueled and moved on but rest of the aspects of reusability is getting demonstrated already you have seen multiple activities which have happened but then future is for making sure that whatever you are using for launching can be brought back refueled so the work is that next generation vehicles are getting designed with that in mind and in the meantime the remaining aspects of reusability is getting demonstrated uh, with this uh, we'll end this session thank you dr kiran kumar and my special thanks to nescom to make uh, give us this opportunity to put uh, put in aspects about space and a special thanks to the audience for being patient and listening to all what happened just now thank you on that note we'd like to thank sri kiran